Hi and welcome to another video in my computing curriculum series. In this video uh, we are going to look at uh, robotics and in order to be able to uh, uh, do this I am going to use uh, some software called uh, Lego Mindstorm EV3 and normally when you have the software you also have the physical robot to go with it uh, but in my case I do not have the physical robot so I am going to use um, a piece of software uh, which is a simulation um, called uh, the virtual robotic toolkit uh, this is actually available from uh, www.virtualroboticstoolkit.com and what this allows uh, people to do basically is instead of uh, programming a physical robot because sometimes you, you may not have a, a physical robot available uh, it allows you to program a robot but on the computer a simulation so what we're going to do first is, is we are going to have a look at very basic um, movement okay so we're going to have a look at the move blocks now I am going to go back to the Lego Mindstorm EV3 software and I am going to create a new project okay so first we, we are going to have a look at, at this move this move block which um, is at the bottom now very quickly in terms of the, the the layout of the screen okay I am going to just close the content content editor there now all the programming happens in this main part here and it happens in a basically a, a flow diagram okay everything happens in a sequence okay after the the arrow you don't need more than one arrow okay one arrow is uh, one one arrow is enough to start it okay so you put everything in sequence with your control structures um, as as well as your sensors etc and then down the bottom we have our different um, our different objects so you've got action blocks which are for example your move your move blocks uh, you have your uh, flow controls so your loops your switches and your weight blocks your sensor blocks uh, you have your data operations which include things like variables your constants your math blocks your greater than your less than your, of course your comparison there um, and your math blocks and then you've got an advanced section there now as I said and then over in the bottom corner okay we have when we switch on the uh, the robot of course we've got the brick information the second one shows the port view which tells us what ports what sensors and what motors are connected and to which ports which is useful for when we start connect uh, adding sensors and motors and then finally um, we can then add uh, we can then see uh, the available bricks okay and if I go back to the virtual robotic toolkit of course I have to switch on the, the robot here very similar to the physical robot and you can see that it's, it's lighted up green and when I go back to the EV3 software, I need to connect to that. Um, I'm going to move that to the top corner there. And I go to the available bricks and I click Wi-Fi. And what that will mean is it connects to from the EV3 software to the simulation. I could go to port view and I can view all my connected um, sensors and motors. Now. As I said, we're going to have a look at the motor block, and there are four blocks. Uh, four blocks you can have. There's the medium. There's a single large motor. There's a double motor steering there, and there's a move tank, which is a 
two motors as well. So I will have a look at motor, uh, the move steering block, and I drag it in. The ports are up the top here. Make sure you check that your uh, that where they're actually connected matches to these motors here. And if not, just select, and we can then change it. So I can select the correct uh, motor ports. And of course, A, B, C, and D are your motor ports. One, two, three, and four are your sensor ports. So I can change these. The top one, of course, is for wired if I want to choose, if I have that input and I can then, um, I can ask um, which motor it belongs to. The first, and then we go down the bottom here, we have some properties. The first one, if I click, I can then select um, what, uh, for example, what sort of, uh, how it's going to measure the distance. So the default here is rotations and rotations is um, how many rotations of the wheel it will turn. So if I put one, it will turn one rotation of the wheel. Okay, if I put two, it's two rotations of the wheel. Then there is degrees, which is not about turning, but it's very similar to the rotations, but how many degrees that wheel turns. So in a, in a wheel, of course, there are 360 degrees in a circle. And so if I put 360 degrees, it will move 360 degrees. If I move 90 degrees, if I put 90, it will turn 90 degrees of the wheel. Seconds is basically the, it will turn the wheel for, um, an appro for the number of seconds I tell it. And then on, is just basically it moves forward until something happens. Now, if I ran this now, nothing would happen because it's not telling me to wait for something. However, if I use a, a wait block, this is a wait for second, and I then put another motor block here, and I change this to off, this will move forward it will just go until the counter, the sec, the timer gets to one second. Once it gets to one second, then it will then stop. If, for example, I change this to a touch sensor, uh, this means it's pressed. So it will move. It will just move forward until the button is pressed. Once I press the button, it will then move to the next block and it will stop. Okay. Unlike if I did uh, rotations where this would just move for one rotation and then it would stop. Okay. In the next part of the properties, we have steering. So I can turn it to the right or the left. That depends on which way I am uh, I have the the, the motors um, uh, motors positioned. The following one is about power, so it goes from one hundred to one is actually forward. Zero is it doesn't move, and then minus one to minus one hundred is reverse, and again that sort of depends on which ways your motors are, are facing there. And then finally, we have the, uh, the property for, let's say, rotations, or for degrees, or for uh, time. This is how far you would like it to travel. So for rotations, if I put one, that will go one rotation. If I put uh, 10, it will move 10 rotations. And the final one is about break at end. And all this means is that if I have it on true, which I, I always leave it on true, it will stop. 
straight. Whereas if I put in on false, it means it will just slow down and slow down when it reaches the, the end. Okay. Now, what I would like to do is, um, is basically make it go forward and turn 90 degrees. And so I am going to make this, I'm going to change this to uh, 40. And I will say one rotation. And I am then going to add another block. And I shall change this to degrees. And let's say 100 power. And let's change this to uh, 125. Now, I then click on the download button down here. I hear the sound to say it's downloaded. I go to the virtual robotic toolkit. I have to hit play first. So it lands on the ground. It's not great. It's not 100% going straight. And then I would then move the arrows to go to the second block. My project's called project. So I click the middle button. I go down. And I hit go, the middle button, and it goes forward. And it should turn. It didn't quite turn. Okay. So I can stop that. Stop that. I come back. Ah, yes. I didn't. I basically told it to go forward. I need it to turn. To turn. So I turn this this way. Try again. Play. Go forward. It doesn't quite turn enough. So I go back. Let's try 250. Okay. Stop. Oh, I'm going to play that first. Not quite enough. So of course I have to make this bigger. Let's try and make this 500. Okay, stop. Play. There we go. And that's going forward 90 degrees. And of course, to make it to a square, I can then press stop again. Of course, to make it to a square, I could just highlight these two blocks. Go to edit, copy, paste. And I can just move it one after each other. Okay. In fact, because the screen size on here is quite small, I'm going to put them underneath. And I can then drag this wire and connect it here. Download. I will move it along a bit so it doesn't hit. Press play. Go forward, turn forward, turn, forward, turn, forward, turn. Right? And it's not quite precise because when, you, when you're when you using robotics, you really do have to use sensors to make it a lot more exact and precise where the gyro sensor comes. And that's where something like the gyro sensor comes into place to make it a lot more exact and precise. Um, I think that's the great thing about virtual robotic toolkit is that it teaches students to make sure they have to use the sensors to make sure it is actually going um, exactly the way uh, you would like it to go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, share and comment. And I look forward to seeing you next time.